He had previously been to a hot stove luncheon where he described his days playing with the Knoxville, Tennessee teams and then ultimately becoming a member of the St. Louis Browns farm system. Here's Dick's story, a most fascinating one. A contract play with Mayfield, Kentucky, and don't you know when I come home, I come to find out my contract was sold to Jamestown. <clears throat> and they'd done all of this without even asking me. Now when I came to Jamestown, we played at Allen Park. They didn't have the stadium built yet. So, uh, so Harry Bisgar would have bought your contract? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you play up in Niagara Falls for no. you? No. Oh, you came right to Jamestown? Yeah, that's right. Well, what would, we don't know much about Harry Bisgar. What, what's your recollections of, of him? Well, I don't know how to express my feelings. <clears throat> well, it's all, it, it won't go any further. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't care. <laughs> he, he's got a living now. <laughs> but uh, he was an un, to me an unusual man. He was thinking about dollar signs all the time, but still he wanted good ball players. And a lot of them came from Niagara Falls down here when the transfer was made. The thing that I remember mostly about Allen Park was where the batters were. And everybody that slid into home base gave the catcher all the dirt he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean plenty of it, too. <laughs> Where did you guys change at Allen Park? Did you have a clubhouse? Did you have a locker room clubhouse no. at Allen Park? No, uh-uh. Didn't have nothing. At that time, I was living in YMCA. And I was just going to bring it up. I'm looking here on my notes. We had to go to Canada to play a double header. And I caught both of them. Well, the first game, in about the third inning, there was a guy on third, <clears throat> and the score was tied. Johnny O'Neill was playing shortstop. And the batter gets up, and he hits a grounder. Boom, and Johnny grabs it. I'm blocking home plate, and he throws that sucker underhand, and it hit me right in the chin. You can see the scar right there. <laughs> Knocked me out cold. When I woke up, here's the manager rubbing my left leg. And I looked at him, and I said, what are you doing with my legs? He says, well, I thought uh, the man slid into you. I said, yeah, maybe he did. But I said, the blood was dripping down my <laughs> I said, here's where I got hit, right there. <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> I finished that game. The second game, it was in about the fourth or fifth inning. I get a tick foul, and it takes this fingernail, walk right straight up like that. Mm. So I go over to our bench, and I ask the manager, I says, where's the medical kit. <clears throat> he says, oh God, he says, I left that thing back in Jamestown. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, okay. So I went over to their bench. They didn't have one. He says, I got a pair of pliers. I said, give me the pliers. I put the pliers on and I pulled that nail right off. Finished catching the, the game. We got on the bus after the two games that we played, came back to Jamestown. This was the wee hours of the morning. And I did not know that my father was, he came all the way up from Knoxville, Tennessee to see me play ball. And I happened to be in So he found out that I was in the YMCA and he woke me up. And he said, what? He says, you look like you've been hit by a freight train. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Well, he says, go look in the mirror. Well, I did, and this here, my God, I, it was really swelled right up, you know. And then I come to, this really hurt then. But when I was playing ball, it didn't hurt. Just a good ball player, pitcher. <coughs> and 
He didn't say too much. Didn't talk too much. I think that's why he was a good pitcher. <laughs> Just what you said. He got a lot of mouth and he really knows how to talk. <laughs> you think of Frank Heller and shyness. He was one awful nice guy though. He'd get quite a crowd. Two or three thousand. I can remember good crowds. Yeah. For the size of the field, good crowds at yeah. Park. Now you were co you were under contract at one point with the St. Louis Club. Uh, St. Louis Browns. And I found out later on after I came back from uh, being in the service, William O. DeWitt owned my contract. He was the owner of uh, St. Louis Brown. And my contract was sold to, uh, oh, the hell is that one in Ohio? I can't think of it right now. But he blacklisted me for five years because I wouldn't go to spring training after I got out of the service. So knowing that I was blacklisted and I had a family and I didn't want to be traveling all over the countryside, I uh, didn't say anything to anybody and I just kept working and, and uh, I found that out later on that that's where my contract went to. But the spring training and the coach in, down in uh, South Carolina, he had a stopwatch. And you start out at home plate and you go around the bases. Well, I started, I run around the bases, you know, and just about, I thought, well, I got it made now. He says, keep going, keep going. I run that thing five times, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I came in and I was pooped, I'm telling you. Well, we had a championship between Mayfield, Kentucky and Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And the score was really tight. And don't you know, the batter gets up and hits a pot fly right on the baseline, <laughs> going to first base. And then he starts running to get to the base. He starts running to get to the base. And our, our first baseman stood there and he puts up his fist like that. <laughs> and the guy run right into his fist and knocked himself out. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And that was a championship game, too. <laughs> yeah. He just stood there like that, you know. <laughs> and the guy run into it. Wow. <laughs> And before the game, they had a lot of all different things that you could do. All the catchers on each team had a chance. They put a cardboard box on second base. They give you three chances to throw in the box. The first two I throwed in that box, right in the center. And the third one, they give you three times hits the ground and goes in the box. And they gave me a Silex coffee. One, they just came out of the class like these things. Now. Man, I thought that was, a, that was the biggest thrill I had in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>